Good evening. It's time to get started. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, just a few announcements here. Uh, please remember uh, Elsa Winters. Uh, this is Sister Suzanne Mash's mother. She's in the hospital at uh, Midtown, uh, St. Thomas Midtown in Nashville. She's got shingles, and so she needs our prayers, please. And also continue to remember uh, Sister Janelle Page in your prayers. Um, Van told me tonight also that uh, if you're within the vicinity of the church building, uh, you can uh, hear the services on uh, channel 88.7. So if, uh, if, if you don't feel comfortable coming in the building, you can sit in the parking lot or be within the vicinity and listen to the church service on channel 88.7. So just remember that, and, to, and anybody else that you see uh, at the church, and they haven't been coming because of the COVID, tell them that they can come and be at the church and just sit in their cars and listen to the service if they like. Um, also, we want to congratulate Court and Haley on their marriage. Proud for them. And uh, Jonah and Sydney on their engagement. Happy for y'all. Congratulations. Proud for y'all. Court, if you will, we're going to ask you to lead opening prayer. And Wyatt, we're going to ask you to lead closing prayer, please, sir. And we do have some birthdays. Van Herndon, Owen Milton, and Dimple Seals all have, have birthdays this week. So let's wish them a happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Van. <laughs> and Roger and Dimple have anniversary the third. So please, if you see them or talk to them, wish them a happy anniversary. This time we'll have our opening prayer. Our first song for tonight will be We're Marching to Zion. <clears throat> Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus around the throne and thus around the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God, the children of the heavenly King. The children of the heavenly King may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful. 
beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's crown. We're marching through Emmanuel's crown to fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Our next song will be redeemed. <clears throat> Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed. His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of His presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. His child and forever I am. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed. His child and forever I am. For him to help us prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper will be We Saw Thee Not. <clears throat> we saw thee not when thou didst come to this poor world of sin and death, nor yet be thy cottage home in that despisedness of wrath. But we believe thy footsteps trod his streets and plains, thou Son of God. But we believe thy footsteps trod his streets and plains, thou Son of God. We saw thee not when lifted high amid that wild and savage crew, nor heard we that imploring cry, forgive they no they do, but we believe the deed was done that shook the earth and veiled the sun, but we believe the deed was done that shook the earth and veiled the sun. Not in the open tomb where once thy mangled body lay, nor saw thee in the upper room, nor met thee on the open way. But we Oh! 
living with the dead, but we believe that angels said, why seek the living with the dead? We walk not with the chosen few who saw thee from the earth ascend, who raised to heaven their wandering view, then lo to earth a prostrate bend. But we believe that human eyes beheld that journey But we believe that human eyes beheld that journey to the skies. Would you bow with me while we give thanks for the bread? Father in heaven, this time we come bowed before you we thank you for this bread and the precious body of our lord and savior savior jesus christ that it represents we pray that we take this bread in a worthy manner that's pleasing and acceptable in your sight these things i humbly pray in jesus blessed name amen Would you bow with me again as we give thanks for the cup? Dear Heavenly Father, we come bowed before you again. We thank you for this cup and the precious blood it represents, Father. We pray as we partake of it that we remember that great and ultimate sacrifice and the price that was paid so we may have forgiveness of our sins and a home with you in heaven, Father. We thank you for this cup, and again, we pray that we take of it in a worthy manner that's pleasing and acceptable in your sight. These things I humbly pray in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Our next song will be I'm Going That Way. If you would please stand while we use this song. <clears throat> I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful light. A beautiful place of mansions fair and skies ever bright. Where all who obey the Savior dear forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long, I'm going that way. The glorious news I tell and sing as onward I go, that those who are still astray in sin my Savior may know. I want them to sing His praise above some beautiful day. For glory to him who died for me, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way. 
And Jesus, the Savior I adore, is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long, I'm going that way. I shall meet him at the gate when trials are past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. And though I believe that when we meet, well done he will say. For trusting his soul, redeeming love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way, and Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long, I'm going that way. Good evening. Welcome back to our Sunday night crowd. We are thankful that you're here. Welcome your presence and uh, thankful that you're able to worship our God in spirit and in truth with, with us, which is always our uh, desire when we come together to, uh, to praise Him in, in the various activities of worship. Don't forget to uh, keep in your prayers our young people as they are going back to school either tomorrow or uh, Tuesday. Many of them are and uh, their, uh, their influence is what we want to be praying about, that they are a reflection of the uh, of the Christian community to those who are around them, and their influence is such an important thing. You'll never have a, a greater opportunity in your life to be able to be an influence to others and the the capacity that you are uh, when you're when you're at school. And so we uh, we pray for their safety, pray for the safety of the uh, the teachers and other administrators and such that are that are working with them during this time. We know that there are some serious concerns, especially for uh, for the older for the older crowd who has to go in and. And, uh, and deal with our, uh, our kiddos at the school system, and so we pray for all of them, but, but especially pray that their influence is great and, and uh, that they have an awesome year uh, beginning this week. I think, that, uh, I think that it's an obvious statement, would be an obvious concern that we are, uh, that we are thoughtful, considering, concerned about our nation right now. Um, Especially during these times, many of the things that we see uh, going on around us are, are definitely of, of concern to those who are members of the Lord's Church. And a lot of times we look at things that, that are going on and we, uh, we see some of the uh, turmoil that's going on uh, within our country. And, uh, and maybe we ask, what, what can I do about it? How can, how can I help? And there are a lot of ways that, that we could talk about that you can be a powerful influence uh, for good and to help things in the right direction with your Christian influence. But, um, you know, someone has made the statement, and I believe that it is exactly right, and I think that it's pertinent when it comes to this topic, and that is that as goes the home, so goes the nation. And I believe that's right. As goes the home, so goes the nation. Your home is, is absolutely vital. I want to talk tonight about the foundation of a nation and that's what we're talking about when we talk about the absolute foundation of a nation that's going to help it to be everything that it ought to be. We're talking about Christian homes that are going to put a powerful influence for good out there into a, uh, into a world that really is struggling. Um, I've, I've heard a number of our political leaders throughout years, especially recent years, say something, say something like this. And uh, it's, it's the statement sounds nice, there is, there is some truth to it, but I don't, I don't believe that it's totally correct. But the idea that has been communicated many times says our diversity in America is our strength. Our diversity in America is our strength. Well, as I said, I, I don't necessarily agree with, uh, with that concept. I believe that, that while we are a, a diverse people, what it is that makes us great is that there are shared common values that we have 
despite the different ethnic backgrounds that people come from. I'm, I'm blessed to have people who are from, uh, as far as their ethnic origins, from all over the world because of my associations in the Lord's Church. Uh, people, who now, people who now uh, have come uh, to claim, come the, United claim the United States as their home, as their home um, but their, uh, their, their background immediately, or maybe their parents or their grandparents are, are from uh, various, uh, various locations around the world. But what makes my relationship with them very, very special and what can make America an absolutely great place is not just that people come from different locations, but that people come from different locations and they come to this location with some common core values, some, some, some shared belief systems that, uh, that helps to make for, uh, for some very, very successful results. Um, there, there's no doubt that we are a diverse people. And, and when you consider all of our different ethnic origins that, that we have in this nation, um, it's, it's remarkable indeed to see people who have come from so many, so many different places, especially if you, if you travel to, uh, to some of the locations in our country that are, that are more um, filled with, uh, with an immigrant prop population, uh, New York, other places like that. If you've been there, you, uh, you see the diversity that is that is there, it really is a melting pot when you consider our country. But again, I believe that our strength comes from shared values that people from, from around the world have and they want to foster and, and to be able to grow and, and develop those same values right here with others of a like mind. And, and the more that we depart from, from those kind of values that I believe are, are rooted and based in Bible principles, the more we depart from them, I believe the weaker that we will become, regardless of diversity or anything like that, the further away you get from Bible principles, the, uh, the more trouble that you're going to be in. Psalm 33 and verse 12, the Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Now, how can a nation say, I, I am sure that the God of heaven is, is our God? That the God of heaven, the God that we read about in the Bible is, is, uh, is our Lord and, and we're going to have His blessings because we're doing His will. How, how can a people be able to say that? Well, a nation can be sure that the Lord is, is the God of heaven if it follows certain basic principles like what you have in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. Your Bible says righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people. That, that is a, a common shared value that we need to have. And to the extent that we do, there is a much greater potential for success and for greatness uh, to occur with, within our nation. History has shown it time and again. A nation is, is going to crumble. It is fractured. It is brought down. The further away it gets from what the Bible teaches as far as some basic principles that we need to use to, to govern our lives. And, and for sure, the very foundation of our nation is absolutely under attack. It is under assault today. You better believe the devil knows that one of the most vital things to the success, the growth, the thriving of a nation is that there are Christian homes that are putting out young people with Christian values that they share with other Christian young people to help to make our nation great. The devil knows that. And so no surprise that our homes are and have been for a long time under assault to, uh, to, uh, to stagnate uh, some of those great things from, from taking place. It is under attack. And that's because a godly home is the foundation of a nation to make it everything that it ought to be. That's what we want with our homes. And in turn, that's what we want to see to, to be able to happen within our nation. But how can the home, the family, the way that, that we have it pictured in Scripture, how can it be the foundation of a great people, the foundation of an absolutely great nation? I want to share a, a handful of things with you tonight that I believe, again, are rooted in Bible principle as far as what we need to have and what we need to be using our homes to develop so that it doesn't stop with our generation, but that it continues for generations to come to help to make the next generation of leaders in our country everything that they ought to be and to, uh, to once again have a powerful influence for good. The foundation of a nation that is seen in our families, number one, our nation needs providing families if, uh, if it's going to be that important, vital, 
a cornerstone of our, uh, of our great nation. There's a great principle in 1 Timothy chapter 5, if you have your New Testament with you, that, that I want you to look at. 1 Timothy chapter 5, and in verse number 8, your Bible says, but if anyone does not provide, there's our word for our first point tonight, provide. If anyone does not provide for his own, especially those of his own household, we're talking about the family unit and what's going on within that house. For his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Now, a family motivates the idea of, of providing. It, uh, it ought to do that. When I, when I recognize that, that I have brought children into this world, that I've got a uh, that I've got a family that uh, that people are counting on me that they are counting on you. Um, it it ought to motivate an ethic. At least it it, it should do that. And that there's just there's a satisfaction that comes from knowing you're you're providing for your family. You're doing what what the Bible says to do. It's it's good and it is right to provide for our families. And and when people understand that the nation can be blessed by the home. And to the extent that that does not happen, and, and there are people who, who have lost that concept and, and are not concerned at all with providing anything for their families, that is going to be a burden on any people if there's just no care for that. The home, the, the family, the Christian home is definitely something, according to following Bible principles, that will encourage that principle of, of providing. Now, if, if a person could work, but you know what? They just, they don't care. They're, they're not interested. They're not invested in their family. They have no, no consideration for the people that are, that are looking to them. The Bible says that that person, 1 Timothy 5, he's not, they're not even up to the standard of an infidel if that's the kind of uh, mindset that they have. It's sinful to live like that. It's, it's wrong to not have any kind of care or consideration on that topic when you don't even try. I mean, you don't even care. Now, wherever there is a disintegration of the family, you will find a decrease in this principle of providing right here. It, studies have shown it across the board where that family unit breaks down and it's a disintegration of it. There is going to be a problem with the principle of providing. And to the extent that that problem begins to develop and, and more and more have that problem, it's going to lead to the fracturing and, and to the crumbling of a, uh, of a society and a free economy. The foundation of a nation. If our homes are going to be what we want them to be, if we want to help our nation to be everything it can be, then we're going to remember to think about the word providing that we find uh, in places like 1 Timothy chapter 5. Number two tonight for our families to be the foundation of a nation, it is going to require the word pure, purity. There needs to be some, some purity in our homes. I want you to look with me at Proverbs chapter 31, if you uh, wouldn't mind turning over there with me. Proverbs chapter 31, of course, we know this is that uh, great chapter in the Bible that deals with, um, with a virtuous woman. And uh, she is exalted in so many ways in this chapter because of her industry, because of her, her uh, desire to take care of her family, because of her example, because of her faithfulness to her husband. But um, look with me, if you would, beginning at verse 10. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. The wise man here pictures a wife with some beautiful terms in this chapter. I mean, right there beginning in verse number 10, he's already compared her to these, to these precious ornaments, to these precious stones. And, and that's what she is to the home when she's what she ought to be. She is a beautiful adornment to the home when it's what God would have it to be as far as the family is concerned. You know, Titus chapter 2 and verse 5 says that she's to be a keeper at home. The Bible also lets us know that she is to be a manager of the house. In other words, she, she guards her household. Nothing is more important to a godly woman than that her family is faithful before God and that she herself is faithful before God. 
Now you're beginning to look at the ingredients for a real good woman, a virtuous woman that's found right here in Proverbs chapter 31. She wants, she wants a godly home. That is her desire. And then we find that that, that brings satisfaction to her home. You know, there's, there's an idea or a concept that I believe is right that says that the mother sets the tone for the home. The wife sets the tone for the home. She, she is such an important uh, influence in the, uh, the attitude that that home is going to have. And, uh, and the Proverbs writer shows how important she is. She beautifies the Christian home by her actions, by her dignity, by her faithfulness. And this passage makes it clear that since she beautifies the home, since she is the heart of the home, it makes her husband a better man because of how good she is. He, he wants to be a better person. Her family wants to be better people because they're looking to mama who sets the tone. They're looking to the wife who sets the tone. I mean, Proverbs 31, 11, he trusts her. He doesn't have to worry. He doesn't have any concern. He knows that his heart is safe with her because she's a godly person. There's never going to be any concern for worry when it comes to a, a virtuous woman being faithful. In the inner chambers of the home, because of that, you've got an environment where selfless love can be expressed. And uh, there's, there's, there's no fear of, of betrayal of, of that trust. These two... Um, these two experience something that is beautiful in that relationship when the family is what God wants it to be, and it is absolutely exclusive. It's, it's, it's between him and her, and that's it. That's the way that God designed for it to be. Not shared by anyone else. Uh, no one else is, is allowed into that realm. That's why Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4 says, that marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. The idea is no foreign element is going to be allowed to enter in. He would never let that happen. She would never, ever let that take place if she loves her husband. Um, no foreign element. It's going to be undefiled. In, the, uh, in that atmosphere, something really, really beautiful takes place. You have an environment for, for selfless giving. That's, that's what God desires. That's what he desires as far as that physical aspect of it, the physical intimacy part, because every time that trust gets broken, every time that happens and you go outside of marriage, a mess is going to be the result. It's, it's, just, it's just not an option. If we're wanting to help our, our nation to be a better place, then we're going to develop purity within our homes and realize that this is exclusive exclusive between us. And how beautiful when you think about that picture that inspiration gives us in Proverbs 31. We could go beyond verses 10 and 11. We don't have time for, for that tonight, but it is a, a beautiful picture in, uh, in building up this great woman. The relationship that they have is one that is safe. It's one that can be sweet. It's one that can be secure. It's one, therefore, that, that can be satisfying when they do what God wants them to do. The foundation of a nation. Our families are able to make our country a better place if we're allowing them to be what God wants them to be. The principle of that word providing is something that is inspired or should be to a Christian by having a family. That idea of pure or purity is something that absolutely must be maintained at all costs if our family is going to be what God wants it to be to help this nation. But then number three, our nation needs, and I put down the word productive. We need productive families. Psalm 127. Psalm 127. We'll use this verse a couple of times tonight. But your Bible says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a heritage from the Lord. What is, what is a heritage? Well, that's your, uh, that's your offspring, your heritage. That's your, uh, that's your legacy. That's your future. That is, uh, that is something that is so vital to helping our nation be everything that it can be. That we are leaving behind a godly legacy. 
I, 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 can't, uh, I can't have any more in my family getting engaged because there's not room on the pew for another one. This is it. We've got this thing packed, all right? But I am, uh, but I am very, very thankful that, uh, that I see, uh, you know, Court and Haley able to, uh, to be able to begin their lives together and, and uh, this other couple over here that shall remain nameless for now, that uh, they've got exciting plans for the future. That's what we're talking about when we talk about a legacy. That's, that's my legacy. That is, uh, that is my, uh, my parents. That is their heritage. And to the extent that it remains a godly one, we have helped to do our part, at least in that aspect of it, to be the, the foundation of, of our nation. That idea from Psalm 127 is that my family is a gift from God. My family is a gift from God. That leads to growing families. That's, that's the goal that I have for them, is that every one of them will go to heaven, will meet somebody who will help them get there, that they will also help the other get there, and that for generations to come, that that is exactly what takes place. And it just keeps right on going, keeps right on growing. That's how God intended it to be. Genesis 1.28, it says, Be fruitful and multiply. The, the home, the Christian family is there to bring God's heritage into this world. To be able to show our world what it's supposed to be. And to, be able to begin to, to share all of these and so many more uh, Christian principles. But Psalm 127.3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. You think about the, uh, the home environment. You think about the, uh, the laughter of a child. You think about the excitement that goes with, with having children and all of the, the different things that they experience in life and all of the, uh, all of the goals and the achievements and, and so many things along the way. Um, I, I think about, uh, you know, with my crew, there's, it, it seems like every day one of them is you know, making something and bringing to us a gift or a card or a picture or, or a drawing or something like that. And uh, maybe they'll slip it under my door. Um, maybe they'll, they'll hand it to me. They'll leave it laying out somewhere. And I've, I've had these going on for almost 20 years now. And it, and it never gets old. Um, but those, those, those young people, those faces, those aspirations that they have, those, those tender hearts, that is the, uh, the picture of the gift that God has given us when he gives us a family. And, uh, and we, better, we better treat it in a, uh, in a very, very precious way. They decorate our homes. Psalm 127. You stay right there in Psalm 127 and drop down to verse number 5. It says this, Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Once again, the idea, our young people are our future, folks. They, uh, they are so important. One of, uh, one of mine came to me recently and said, you know, I've been thinking about the holidays. I was like, all right, well, what, what are you thinking about the holidays? And she said, what if all of us have as many kids as, as you have? What are we going to do? Well, for one thing, you're not all getting presents. We're cutting that off right there because I can't, <laughs> okay? But, uh, but, but, Maybe we'll stagger it. I don't know. We've got to schedule this thing out or something. But wouldn't that be a beautiful thing if all of them decided that they wanted to have Christian families and then to be able to grow and to propagate Christianity into whatever experiences they have in life as, as they go out into the world. Our, our young people are absolutely our future. And since they're, they're described in a variety of ways, Psalms describes them even as plants. And uh, that means that they've got to be watered in one way or another. They've got to be cultivated. They've got to be taken care of. They have got to be, they've got to be nurtured. Um, if you want a plant to not make it, send it with me. If you want a plant to thrive, send it with her. I hope that I can be a little bit better with children than I am with plants, Okay. But, uh, but we understand that there's a process that's involved and you've got to do something if you want to make it work. 
Young people are not just going to be a godly influence. You have to make them a godly influence if we want them to be great and, and powerful for our nation. But that's why we read in Ephesians 6, 4, you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, Van Herndon. I heard about what you did recently, taunting your children with the remote control or whatever it was that, uh, that you had. But uh, I think this is a little bit different than having some fun around the house and, and having a good laugh, okay? The idea here is that uh, when, when this happens, not only are you going to be a blessing to them, but they're going to be a blessing to you, and therefore they're also eventually going to be a blessing to those around them and their, their sphere of influence even to our, our nation and world. How great it is when, when children are trained in the way of the Lord. Every Christian home makes this world a better place. Every Christian family that's represented in this room right now and, and listening to us wherever they might be out there, you're doing your part to make this world a better place. There is something that you can do. I know we're concerned, but that's the powerful influence that, that we can have. Um, that, that kind of producing will be a blessing to our nation. Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs 17. I picked, on, uh, I picked on Mr. Joe this morning with this verse. Had all of his uh, beautiful grandchildren here. I know he was excited about that. But the Bible says, The glory of children are their fathers. But listen to how the verse starts. Children's children are the crown of old men. You know, that's, that's so true. I have no idea what my parents talked about before these guys came along. And I say that because now that's all they talk about. They don't talk about me. They don't talk about my brother. They talk about the grandkids. I don't know what they talked about before them because that's all it is right now as far as, uh, as, far as physical family is concerned. Um, grandparents have that right because the Bible says that children's children are the crown of old men. The home encourages that to happen. A godly family encourages that kind of, of productivity. One more for tonight. Number four, to be the foundation of a nation, our families need to remember the word principled. Bible principles. We need principled homes. What kind of principles does, does this nation need us to have? Well, I mean, this is what we're doing tonight. We're looking at several of them, and there are so many more that we could go on to list. But it reminds me again of where we started, Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Any kind of, of Bible principle of righteousness is what we want to be instilling in the next generation to help our nation to be everything that it can be. And as the verse says, the further we get away from that, what it calls sin... It doesn't end well. Folks, our, uh, our forefathers understood this. I, I, love to, uh, I love to read I, to history. I love the stories of history. I love to study history. Um, there is no, no question at all that this country, the United States of America, was built on godly principles. The founding fathers, those who... who uh, put together the founding documents were Bible-believing people. And, and they saw the, uh, the essential nature of a people who followed Bible principles for this nation to be all that it can be. That's, that's just the fact of history. And, uh, and, and I, don't, I don't want you to misunderstand me on this. America is not to be considered the people of God the way that Israel was in the Old Testament. It's, it's, we misuse it if we try to use it in that same way. Israel was selected by God to be a people who would bring Jesus into this world and to help to nurture that, he gave them a special law called the Mosaic Covenant, the law of Moses, to help to keep them as close as what they ought to be until the time that Jesus came into this world. And because they brought Jesus into this world, that was his chosen people. Chosen to bring the Christ into the world. Not chosen to be saved. They could be lost based on their on their behavior. They had to do what was right. They were chosen, they were the people of God to bring Jesus into the world, to bring us the Messiah. We, uh, we are not that 
The Israel of God today is His church. The people that, that make up the church are the Israel of God today. But still, the Bible nonetheless teaches, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And so there's a great, a great principle there. And the nation whose God is the Lord is the one that can say, we understand that righteousness exalts a nation and that sin will destroy a nation. And so we're going to do the best we can to follow Bible principles to help to make an, our nation great. John Adams was a great statesman, also a president of the United States of America, one of our great founding fathers. John Adams said, quote, Our Constitution is for a moral people. It will not work for any other. Now that's, that's the voice of our found, one of our founding fathers. And there are others that are a lot more strong and a lot more specific than that as far as what they believed about the Bible and governing people. You know, people want to debate the founding fathers and the founding documents and, and their spirituality. That's, that's straight from them. And he was right. And really what, uh, what President Adams was doing was he, was he was giving us a warning, a very, very clear warning. He was saying... We have started something great here. Never in the history of our world had there ever been anything seen like what was put together at the founding of the United States of America and the founding documents and, and, and everything that went into it. We have started something great. But what he let us know is the only way it works based upon the way we have designed it is if the people of it are moral and decent, and have good character. It's the only way that it's going to work. Folks, question, where does that get taught? Now, obviously, we come here and we hear a sermon like this, and morality and decency and character and Bible principles are things that we teach here. But before, before that ever happens, it begins at home. Godly families instilling those great, great principles to help to make our nation everything that it can be. It's learned in the home. What should government do? Well, the very best it can to not get in the way of all that. The best it can to, uh, to encourage what our founding fathers envisioned, what they had in mind in the home, not tear it down. So it's taught in the home. It's not hindered, and hopefully maybe it's even encouraged by the government. And what happens? Godly principles can now grow and flourish and help to make a, a society great. That's the foundation of a nation. That's how vital it is. There is an ancient proverb that I want to share with you tonight. We'll go ahead and turn this over for you, Jeff. The proverb says this. If there be righteousness within the individual, there will be happiness within the home. If there be happiness within the home, there will be harmony within the nation. And if there be harmony within the nation, there will be peace in the world. What a, what a great statement. The solution to our world's problems is not necessarily found in some kind of a uh, man-made peace summit or so many other things that people look to. The solution to the problems in our world is found at the cross. It's, it's found in us living and teaching and following Bible principles. And so tonight I ask us, do you... And we'll look at it individually, think about it exclusively for yourself. Do you help or hinder your home from being what God wants it to be? Think about you as a parent, think about yourself as a child. Think about yourself as a husband or a wife. Are you or have you been helping or hindering our nation based upon the principles that you allow yourself to live by and, and to be governed by. Can you say because of your influence on your home, 
We live in a we live in a godly family. We are making a difference, a difference for good. Individual husbands and fathers, y'all got to answer that question for yourself, whether or not that's the case. Individual mamas, wives, you got to answer that for yourself individually. My young people, I talked to you at the beginning, you're going back to school this week, you're going to have the, the ability to powerfully influence dozens, yes, hundreds of people every day. Are you helping or are you hindering based upon the decisions that you make? Got to answer that question. I, I hope that each of us tonight will, will think about how really vital, how important our families are and I would also ask us to remember that that starts with some individual accountability on all of our parts. It starts with me. It starts with you. We're not going to answer to God as a family or as a church family or as your individual family. You're going to answer to God for yourself. It starts with me. And maybe you looking at it individually tonight, you're recognized, I, I need to put Christ on in baptism. I'm not having a Christian influence if I'm not even yet a, a Christian myself. I hope that you are, are considering obeying the gospel. The Bible teaches that you've got to believe in Jesus Christ. You need to change your mind, what it calls repentance, Luke 13, 3. You need to confess your faith. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, just like they did in Acts 8, just like it's commanded in Romans 10, 9, and 10. And to be baptized for, in order to obtain the remission of sins. That's how you get into Christ. Acts 2, 38, Galatians 3, and verse 27. Individually, maybe you've done that, but you've, you've gone away from home. Your church family needs you. Your own family needs you to be what you ought to be. So we think about it tonight as we wind up individually for yourself. And if you need to respond, I want you to take care of it right now as we stand and sing. Jesus is tenderly calling thee home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love wilt thou roam farther and farther away? Calling today, calling today. Jesus is calling. Tenderly calling today, Jesus is calling the weary to rest. Calling today, calling today, bring him thy burden and thou shalt be blessed. He will not turn thee away. Calling today, calling today. is calling is tenderly calling today Jesus is pleading oh list to his voice hear him today hear him today they who believe on his name shall rejoice quickly arise and away calling today tenderly calling today. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, Wyatt, please remember to uh, bless the offering in your prayer. Uh, if you didn't pick up a bulletin when you came in, there are some bulletins for this week out in the holder in the foyer on the right. Please pick one of those up as you leave. Our closing hymn will be when the roll is called up yonder. <clears throat> When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll 
is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be Thank <laughs> you.